see how you did on the first ones. For G double prime, that would just be finding very the first derivative first. It has a simple chain rule. And then finding the derivative again, again still has a chain rule. You could simplify the first one to be 10, put the 2 and the 5 together to get 10. Same thing in the second one, you could put the 5 and the negative 10 together to get negative 50. That would be fine. And then integrating, if we're working backwards with a simple chain rule, we just have to undo the simple chain rule by dividing by 5. All right, you want to check how you did on this one? Well, you are going to have to use substitution here because we see a function inside of another function, and the derivative of x cubed is x squared, so an x squared function is present. This is really hinting that substitution is what we're going to need. Now, when you find the derivative, you get that extra 3, and so there's just a little bit of rearranging to get just the x squared and the dx. So when you replace, you still have the square root, the u is inside of that square root, and the x squared and the dx have replaced by a du and that dividing by 3. Simple integral of adding 1 and dividing. And don't forget the plus C at the end. All right, let's see how you did on this one. If they tell us that the area under the curve from 0 to 3 of some function is 8, and now we double that, well, that 2 could come out in front. And since we know this area is 8, that 2 inside there would just make the entire area 16. Okay. But you have to be careful because this will make you think that the next answer should be 10 and the next answer is not going to be 10. Right? Because you think, oh, if I double it and it was 8, I get 16. Well, why doesn't it work that if I just add 2, doesn't it just become 8? Well, what's actually happening is you're taking the original graph. So let's say this is my original graph, and its area is 8. And moving it up to creates a rectangle on the bottom. Does that make sense? If you wanted to find the area under the curve, and you move a graph up two units, you're going to create a whole other area of a rectangle on the bottom. And this, if you're going from 0 to 3 and up 2, it's pretty easy to see that that area is going to be 6. So this is a graphical way of showing you the answer for this next one is going to be 14. Algebraically, though, because if you give students a choice, they never want to do a, a graphical solution. Okay? Algebraically, what does it mean when you integrate when you're adding? Well, you integrate them separately. This one I know is 8. And this one, right, how do I integrate 2? It's going to be 2x from 0 to 3. I plug in 3. I plug in 0. I get 6. And the area is 14. So the fact that this one is times by 2 and seems so easy, can you see yourself being tempted in the second one just to go, oh, I'll just add 2 to my answer? and get 8. And finally, what would happen if you did this? So we knew that originally the graph from 0 to 3 was 8. And now we want to find C and D so that this is also equal to 8. And thinking back to our transformations, that f of x minus 2 is just moving your graph two units to the right. So the answer is if your original area here was 8, and you move the graph one two units to the right, 
and it still would be 8, does it make sense that it would have to go from 2 to 5? 